I think he's a sort of renaissance man. Um, you wouldn't think it to look at him when you first meet him. He seems kind of an ordinary South Carolina guy. But the more you time you spend with Ted, the better you get to know him, the more amazing his range of accomplishments becomes. He can cook better than most people I know. He is a master gardener. He can hunt. He can take photographs. He's a musician. He is... I don't think there's anything that Ted put his mind to or his hands to that he wouldn't be able to do and do beautifully and do well and do modestly. Storyteller. Ted is a really good storyteller and he will be missed um, not only by students but also by colleagues. Um, I do have some nice things to say about Ted besides mm -hmm. barbecue. <laughs> um, his teaching ability, uh, his willingness to connect with our students on all kinds of levels has just really been such a contribution to our program. Being colleagues with Ted, I would have to say, um, I know him and appreciate him for his generosity, his candor, good sense of humor, um, and a willing smile. And as always, it's those good stories that get us all. I was born in Bowling Springs, North Carolina, which is a little tiny college town. You may have heard of Gardner Webb College. Okay, see that's how tiny it is. It was originally a Baptist junior college. Mm -hmm. And during the wave, you remember back in, I don't know, you're not old enough to remember that. In the 80s and 90s, well, sometimes in the 70s, they started this movement that a lot of these small community colleges became universities. In fact, when I first knew Francis Marion, it was a college. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the writer Ron Rash? No. Okay. He writes a lot of stories about his childhood coming up in a small town in North Carolina. It's the same town I was born in, except he calls it Cliffside, but it's actually Bowling Springs. But because it had a college, it, it had a sort of a different ethos than a typical Northwood. Some of the college teachers, because they didn't pay them anything at Gardner Webb, would walk across the street from Gardner Webb. They'd be teaching their kids over there and they'd sign on to teach some special courses for the local high school. And we were just across the street. Mm -hmm. So they could come over and they'd teach us occasionally. I had chemistry from a uh, college prof and my grade reflected that he was a college prof. Mm -hmm. I was not good at it, but it was a real innocent little town to grow up in and be poor. We were very poor. Farmed, we farmed and well, that's where I got my love of gardening and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I went to undergraduate school in the mountains of North Carolina, Western Carolina University. And that's where I met my child bride. She's, uh, <laughs> she's considerably younger than I am. She's five years younger. Mm -hmm. uh, we both had sort of a missionary complex. We wanted to go somewhere where the need was great and we thought we could, we were sort of kind of, you know, on the fading end of the hippie thing. Mm -hmm. and so what year was this when this you got married? 69, 1969. Okay. And so we, we ended up in Marion, South Carolina, the first year of full integration in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And the people in that town, even the people who could afford to send their children anywhere to school, and in that time, at that time in Marion, there were considerable number of people in town who could do that. Decided they wanted public education to work, and so they really jumped in there, and we had a good community support. And so for the next 30 years or so, we had a really good high school. I think at the heart of it, Ted is a, is a natural teacher. He is someone who relates, um, relates very well with students. He is comfortable being in charge of the classroom. He is a person, um, you know, he's now, 
now in the year that he's retiring, he's been teaching for more than 50 years. And I think everyone in the department who interacts with him sees the kind of enthusiasm and interest and, and wonder that he brings to his work. He, he has maintained over all these years those characteristics that we know teachers need to maintain. He's, he's energetic, he's creative, he wants to find new ways of engaging students. He wants to continue learning. He has done what I don't think any other individual could have done in terms of the outreach between the Francis Marion Teaching Licensure Program and the surrounding school districts. His intimate knowledge, his professional handling, and the fact that he is not perceived as an outsider or a threat has made it possible for our students to oh, let's face it, take over this part of the state in terms of teaching English. And that legacy is not exclusively, but largely Ted Wisnitz, and it will impact this region for good for decades to come. In the, in the more recent years, when Ted has served as, as the supervisor of our student teachers, he has really been He's really been ideal in that, that capacity. Uh, with over 30 years of high school teaching experience, there's very little that our student teachers won't, that, that they can see or they'll experience that Ted hasn't experienced before. He has a lifetime of, of wisdom and information to share with them. Uh, he is a challenging supervisor. He pushes those student teachers to be the, to be the very best that they can be. He, uh, he pushes the cooperating teachers to, um, to, to give up some of their, their, their classroom space and some of their time to allow these student teachers to, to develop the skills that they need and to, and to flourish. He works extremely hard with, the, with, with those teachers. He, um, he spends hours responding to emails. He goes over lesson plans. He helps them prepare for conferences with parents. Mm -hmm. He helps them sharpen their curriculum. And, he's, uh, and, he, and he demands that they bring excellence to the to their tasks. I worked with him in the writing lab and he was my student teaching supervisor. But I think the best time was probably student teaching. Um, he came to see me and there were some problems with a parent and he made sure to sit me down because I was really worried that I was going to be blamed because I was student teaching in the IB program and there was just a lot of stuff and he sat down with me and he looked me straight in the face and he said, Ashley, I'm on your side. And that meant a lot. Um, he's always had a great sense of humor, always had a way of making you feel warm and welcome in the lab, not only just the lab assistants as well as the students. You know, what Ted brings to the table is that vast experience that he can draw from mm -hmm. and the relationships with teachers and administrators in the area where he's built up that trust over time. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's something that I strive for and that I'm hoping that everybody that we have here at FMU that works with our teachers can, can be doing those things as well. Mm -hmm. It's been one of the best parts about my professional career to be able to work with him um, because not only is he good at his job, but he also is really uh, willing and eager to help you be better at yours. And I know that um, I couldn't do my job as well as I do if it weren't for his generosity and in introducing me to people and sharing his experience. And um, so I hope to be the kind of colleague that he's been uh, as my career continues. Mm -hmm. He's so friendly and so generous. And, uh, you know, and so I really I feel blessed to have somebody who, who is so charitable and so experienced and knowledgeable and friendly, you know, to be able to ease the transition in, in in terms of taking over the, the long and legendary job that he's done in the position that he's had. So mm -hmm. it's helped make that transition easier. And, and so, yeah, I probably can't say enough about him for mm -hmm. that, but it's all good. So. Um, he, I think he has a tremendous gift for telling a story um, and making you laugh and bringing characters to life which is good for an English teacher, um, but he's just really a good soul. And I could see how he would be a good 
sort of family presence for students trying to start a teaching career and, and scared about all the various new things that that involves and who would be a good company for this. Mm -hmm. Always, he makes you feel like he's on your side. And I've heard him compliment so many people who are having a hard time and suddenly make their life brighter, whether it be a student teacher or a colleague or someone he's sharing an office with. I haven't known a soul who shared an office with him that didn't fall in love with him in some way or another. And he shared a lot office offices with a lot of people since I've been here. Ted, Ted has been a, a mentor to me, and he was always there to help calm my anxiety through my first year and and find nice things to say about me and and to help me um, really feel at home here. In fact, he pretty much become like a surrogate father to me. Um, he gives my children gifts and he's um, given advice to my husband. He's really um, kind of just a nice part of my life. And I'm, I'm really glad that um, I was able to share an office with him and now I'm crying. <laughs> Someone told me what was the best thing about sharing an office with Ted Wisnett for all those years. By far the stories especially stories about his experiences in high school, particularly with high school administrators and the funny thing, I can't repeat any of the stories. <laughs> You'll have to get him to tell the stories, but the funny things they would say over the PA system, I mean, those stories especially just crack me up, but stories in general, for sure. <laughs> the last at least 25 years since I've been here. Yeah. Um, he's taught for the English department, first teaching when he was still at Marion, first year writing and literature at night. I'd often see him at night classes coming in. And then later after his official retirement from Marion, uh, he's worked with English licensure students. He's helped with placement of students in student teaching um, schools. He observed students in the field. He's gotten students through a lot of crashes and burns sometimes. There's one to get. Yeah. <laughs> Edgy, too. <laughs> and he has ferried them through the difficult trip uh, through student teaching toward their first teaching job. So, a lot of folks have their first teaching jobs because of Sam's Eagle Lot, finding places he thinks they'll fit, and helping them get acclimated in the schools. So, a lot of our teaching here in the PD, in the English field particularly, we, we have Ted Wisnett to thank. So, uh, he's also contributed tomatoes, <coughs> eggplant, barbecue, <laughs> greens, and guitar and song to our otherwise dreary life in the English department. So, we're going to miss you a lot, Ted. Um, but you have a lot of time now for traveling and reading and doing other things. In your second retirement, and perhaps we'll get you on your third. So, Wayne has a poem to read. Oh, well. And, um, <laughs> For Ted. Old friend, soul filled with cider and chalk dust. I cannot hear the radio twang of Amarillo by morning without thinking of your eyes glazed behind wire rimmed glasses, dancing to the slow rhythms of fraying guitar strings and the off key voices of tipsy crooners. So much, so many of us learn from you. Tall tale belly laughs, perfect bowl of chili. The whisper of an ancient poem, sparking for the first time on a student's quivering tongue. For decades you have shown them what's at stake on this rough earth they've just begun to tread. Bird song, ripe tomatoes, gentle mornings, elderberry wine. Their very lives, which glisten because you aim the limbs their way, flashed golden light along these unmarked trails. None of us, no, not one, have all the words we need to thank you. She's calling my name again.
One more time.